Hi everyone and welcome to this eCognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at the vector orthogonalization algorithm within eCognition. We're gonna have a theory section at the beginning and then some use cases within eCognition Developer. This algorithm only can be applied on vectors and the best use case is probably the generalization of buildings. So actually it's a process of finding a set of orthogonal vectors that span a particular subspace. Subspace here in these cases are on the left hand side and it tries to orthogonalize, so generalize our input and you can define the intensity of the generalization and finally what you want to have is a very simplified um, rectangular that spans your input vector. It can also help you in reducing the number of vertices for your polygons. So if you're looking for rectangular image objects and want to extract vectors based on your objects, try to use vector orthogonalization and I'm gonna show you how in this video. In the background you saw a few examples how orthogonalization within the cognition can be applied and how the result might look like. We're gonna have a look at this example here. So the settings that you can change in this algorithm are chessboard size, merge threshold and main direction. Chessboard size defines the size of the chessboard. That's gonna be crucial. I'm gonna show you why, but we're gonna stick for this example for chessboard size 10. And uh, then it actually calculates for each chessboard object the overlap to the vector. So 0.7 means 70%, 0.4, 40%. And based on this overlap, it then classifies them into they will belong into the final orthogonalized vector or they won't. And the threshold for this is the merge threshold. In our case, it's set to 0 0.5. So everything that overlaps, so every chessboard that overlaps, the polygon, the input vector, more than 50% will be included in the final generalized vector. All right, let's change the settings. Merge threshold is now at 0 0.3. And what that means is it's gonna include also chessboards that have only an overlap with the initial vector of 30%. That in our case means the resulting orthogonalized vector is gonna be larger than the previous one, right? Because we're simply adding more uh, vectors as you see in the green numbers here. Okay, in the next step, I also want to include the 20% objects at the top line. So I simply decrease the merge threshold in this case to 0 0.1. That means everything above 10% coverage of the input vector will be included in the output vector. And the results gonna change as you see in the slide. Okay, two more short examples. In this case, I increase the chessboard size to 20, cap the merge threshold to 0 0.1. It again calculates the overlap to the input vector. And based on these settings, this would be the resulting vector using this vector organization parameters defined here on the left hand side. All right, so here you see an overview of our original input vector and the outputs that we've generated. Mm, what we changed is the chessboard size and also the merge threshold. And as you see, the results change significantly. So you have very different results based on the different settings. Now let's have a look at the last one, the main direction. By default, it's set to auto detect. That means the main direction gets estimated by eCognition based on the largest sum of edges with the same angle but you also can define the main direction yourself. So you can define a fixed number for the rotation angle as in the examples that you see here on the slides, or you can use a feature. And I'm gonna show you how to use a feature to actually rotate the output to the correct direction of the input vector. So the angle here doesn't rotate the output vector after the creation, it fits the initial orientation of the input vector to the raster right? and then it applies the orthogonalization and that leads to very nice straight lines and less vertices. Okay enough theory let's have a look at eCognition. 
So I have a project here where I did a classification. You see here the image objects that I've created and classified into different classes. And um, I converted actually the building classification into a vector within eCognition. And you see that the vector follows the outline of the pixels. So the outline of the image objects. What we want to do in this project is get really nice outlines of our buildings using this orthogonalization and that also gonna reduce the number of vertices so the vector won't follow the pixels anymore. Okay. We are using the vector orthogonalization algorithm. In the domain we define which vector we want to use, in our case the converted object buildings and we've discussed the parameters already previously, so chessboard size, merge threshold and the main direction. And the results can be seen here in yellow. So red was the input outline and this is now the result of this vector orthogonalization. For some that might be already what they want to have, but um, it's not very intelligent. So we simply used chessboard and match threshold. Let's change the settings a bit and try to come up with a better outline. So set chessboard size to 10 and merge threshold to 0 0.3. And you're gonna see the outline now also represents the chessboard size. So smaller ch chessboard size um, leads to these staircase-like looking outline. For some buildings, it looks very good um, because the auto detection worked quite nicely. Let's reduce the chessboard size to five and you see, yeah, you get less generalized vectors if you decrease the chessboard size. Let's go back and change the merge threshold to 0 0.8 and they should become smaller because only if it's overlapping 80% it's gonna be included in the final vector. Again, 20, 0 0.5, just different settings playing around and it depends on what you wanna have. Um, in the next step, we gonna try and change the main direction to a certain angle uh, to create more meaningful vectors based on the input. So for some buildings it looks pretty good, but if you see here these um, rotated objects, um, they don't look very good. So in this case I change the main direction to 45, 45 degrees and see how that influences the output. All right, so that looks better for these buildings here. You see they are oriented in a 45 degree angle, more or less. But uh, for the other buildings, especially down here, you see those small ones, it also rotated them 45 degrees and the vectors actually don't really represent the input building as you see here in the classification because we simply used 45 degrees, right? It doesn't reflect information of the object. Now a more intelligent way would be to use the direction of each building object and use this direction as input for the vector orthogonalization. The idea is to fill the main direction with the orientation attribute of each single building object. And there's a feature called main direction, which gives you the main direction of each image object. And in this section of the rule set, I am using for each image object or for each vector that comes out of the vector organization, I'm using the main direction of the input image object, meaning each single building. So it goes through each building, creates a vector, uses the main direction of this building and writes that and uses that for the vector organization. And you're gonna see the result looks way better. This is a way more intelligent approach than the previous one. Okay, here we go. That's the result of these rotation and the vector organization using the individual orientation of the input objects. All right. And that looks pretty good, I would say. That's the best result so far comparing it to the previous ones that I've deleted. So let's go back and create those again. 
Um, so the initial authorization was this one. I'm going to change the color. So purple was the initial one. Um, black the input. So that was the input vector coming from the objects. Then there was the first auth organization that I tried, not very intelligent. And now the last one is the one where I use the orientation of each single object and applied this to the auth organization algorithm. It is not perfect. You even could improve the orientation and use the orientation of the longest edge of an object and that would actually lead to even better results and you see the number of vertices has been re reduced drastically so the outlines do not follow the pixels anymore they are straight lines now so the resulting shapefile that you export is way smaller all right so that was it vector organization I'm really happy that I don't have to pronounce this word again because I find it quite difficult. Thank you for watching this Ecognition Deconstructed video and hear you next time.